Hello friends, today we are going to analyze the given portal frame for the calculation of axial thrust, CFOs and bending moment. Now first of all for any given determinate frame structure, first step is to find out the resultant of the support. Now we know that at hinge support we will have one vertical reaction, one horizontal reaction. And at location C, due to the roller support, vertical reaction is RC. Now, using the equilibrium condition of a determinist structure as sigma h equal to 0, first, we will have the HA value as a 15 kilonewton. Now taking a moment at location A which must be equal to 0 according to the condition and assuming clockwise moment as a positive. Now at location A if we take the 15 kN load then it creates clockwise moment and perpendicular distance is 1.5 meter. Hence the value is 15 into 1.5. Now for 10 kN per meter UDL the total load is 10 into 3. And CG distance is 3 by 2 from the location B. And if we take a perpendicular distance from A, it is also a 3 by 2. Hence, the value is positive due to the clockwise moment at location A. Total load is 10 into 3. And CG distance is 3 by 2. And RC creates anticlockwise moment. And perpendicular distance is 3 meter from the location A. Hence, the value is minus 3 times RC, which must be equal to 0. Now solving this term we will have the value of resultant or the reaction at C RC which is equal to 22.5 kN. And if we take the third equilibrium condition as a sigma V equal to 0 and taking upward load as a positive then RA in the upward direction RC in the upward direction while UDL of 10 into 3 in downward direction. So total value is RA plus RC minus 10 into 3 must be equal to 0 while RC is equal to 22.5. So putting the value of RC we will have the reaction at location A as a 7.5 kN. So first step for any determinate frame analysis is to find out all the reactions. Now second step is we have to discrete the element of the frame. It means the column and beam must be discreted or we can say that the separate and redraw the frame as shown in the figure in which we have indicated the loading on the column beam as it is as the given in the frame as well as the reaction which is found out from the three equilibrium condition. Now after the discretalization or separation of the beam and column, we have to equalize or neutralize the given column as well as beam using sigma h0, sigma v0 and moment at joint equal to 0. So first of all if we take the horizontal load then at location A 15 kN horizontal right to left or negative directional 15 kN load is there. At location D positive 15 kN load is there. So total load is 0. So we do not require any horizontal load at location B. And if there isn't any load on the location B then this system is neutralized due to the horizontal reaction. Now we have to take care about the neutralization of vertical forces. Now at location A our vertical reaction is 7.5 kN. So for the AB span we have to apply opposite load at the location at B point in vertical member. Now observing the given figure we do not have any vertical load at location B. So equal force of 7.5 kN is also applied in the BC span at location B but the direction is in upward or opposite of the load as 7.5. So 
at location b total load is zero now if we calculate a vertical load over the bc span then 7.5 in upward direction 22.5 in upward direction so total upward load is 30 while udl load is 10 into 3 30 in the downward direction so at location c we have sigma v equal to 0 hence the given system is neutralized let us draw a axial and shear force diagram first then now first of all the axial thrust means the load along the largest dimension of the member so for the ab the load is 7.5 kN. compress the member ab it means we have to draw a compressive diagram and compression is taken in the negative direction and let us assume 7.5 kN without scale as a then this diagram indicates in the negative direction of the value 7.5 as a axial thrust diagram for AB member. Now observing B2C member along the largest dimension there isn't any horizontal load. It means the diagram for axial thrust in B2C span is zero. So the figure indicates the axial thrust diagram of the given figure. Similarly for the shear force diagram if we observe the point A 15 kN load is in the upward direction so we have to plot a 15 kilo newton in upward point now between a to d there isn't any point load so according to the shear force rule a to d we have to draw a horizontal straight line now at location d 15 kilo newton downward load is there so from 15 to 15 kilo newton downward the value is zero and the value is zero at location d and now from D to B there isn't any load between D to B and so diagram is straight line. Similarly for B to C point our reaction in upward direction as a 7.5. So we have to plot 7.5 meter in upward direction. Now from B to C there is a 10 into 3 30 km downward load is there. So 7.5 minus 30 as a minus 22.5. So at location C, our diagram is 22.5 in the downward direction. And due to the UDL, we have to connect these two points with the inclined straight line. And at location C, our value is 22.5 upward. So here, the value is 22.5 negative and upward 22.5 creates the value as a 0. So figure indicates the shear force diagram of this given frame system in positive and negative direction. Now observing the figure, we will have the zero shear force location between B to C. So let us assume the distance from the location B as a x meter, then observing the B to C point which is of 3 meter, the rest value is 3 minus x. If we apply a similar triangle rule, then the value is 7.5 divided by x, which is equal to 22.5 divided by 3 minus x. And by solving this value, we will have the distance x as a 0.75 meter. It means that from location B at distance 0.75 meter, we will have the maximum bending moment. Now we have to consider a bending moment for the given frame and for the calculation of bending moment, we have to consider each and every point like D point B and in between B to C at 0.75 meter, there is a maximum bending moment. Let us assume that point as a E from location B. If we take a moment at location B, then 15 into 3 meter in clockwise direction, while at location D of 15 km creates anti-clockwise moment. So it is minus 15 into perpendicular distance as a 1.5 meter. Now calculating this moment, the value is 22.5 kilonewton meter. 
This value indicates that at location B, clockwise moment of 22.5 kN is generated. And for the neutralization of this system, we have to apply opposite of the calculated value. So at location B, we have to put anti-clockwise of 22.5 kN moment. The value of this moment is 22.5 kN meter. Now, we know that and in actual frame, there isn't any external moment at location B. Hence, at point B in the direction of C, we have to apply the opposite moment at location B in the direction of A. Hence, at location B of beam BC, we have to apply the clockwise moment which is opposite of this moment and the value is same as a 22.5 kN meter. Now if we take the moment at location C then at location B clockwise 22.5 kN meter moment is there. Now due to the 7.5 kN upward load the moment is generated in the clockwise direction so it is positive 7.5 into perpendicular distance is 3 and due to the UDL it creates anti-clockwise moment at location C and it is minus 10 into 3 as a total load into 3 by 2 as a CG distance. Now calculating this term the moment value at location C is 0 so that our answer is right as we know that at location C total moment must be 0. Now if we take a moment at location D and we observe the distance D to A or we can say that in the left hand side direction, so in the direction of A, our moment is 15 into perpendicular distance as a 1.5. So total value is 22.5 and the value is positive so we have to apply the anti-clockwise moment at location D in the direction of A and the value is 22.5 kN meter. Similarly if we take the moment at location E then moment at location E but in the direction of B which is 7.5 into 0.75 meter in clockwise direction. plus clockwise 22.5 kN meter moment is there so plus 22.5 and 10 kN per meter UDL creates anti-clockwise moment hence it is minus 10 into total distance is 0.75 into CG distance as a 0.75 by 2. Now calculating this moment total value of moment at location E is 25. Point 31 kN meter and the value is clockwise. So we have to apply anti-clockwise moment in location E but in the direction of B and it is as a now using this value we have to draw a bending moment diagram and it is as as per the calculation we will have the moment at location A as a 0 at location D or the under the point load of 15 kN as per the given frame as a 22.5 kN meter anti-clockwise moment in the direction of B to A. At location B our value is anti-clockwise 22.5. At location B to C our value is 22.5 kN meter clockwise. At location E having the maximum bending moment of value 25.31 kN meter and at location C our value is 0. Now using anti-clockwise and clockwise or we can say that hogging and sagging moment we have to plot either in the negative or in the positive direction. But if we have to simplify the moment diagram using the direction as shown in the figure then take a note that here the value is anti-clockwise which creates the downward drop of location D and the value is 22.5 so we have to draw a downward directional diagram here also the diagram creates a downward motion of the frame 
and the value is again same as a 22.5 kilo newton meter now we know that between these two points there isn't any point load hence the diagram is inclined straight line while the both value is of same value has we have to plot horizontal straight line so this diagram indicates the bending moment of span ab if we observe the location b our diagram creates the downward drop here also in the direction of e to b 25.31 creates the downward drop and it is a higher value than the 22.5 so our diagram is of the highest of all the values and the value is 25.31 and here the value is 0 now between these two point there is a udl of given frame so we have to draw a curve axial thrust diagram shear force diagram as well as after the calculating of maximum bending moment point bending moment diagram of given frame using the simple analysis of statics thank you